And for our final story for this edition of The Rolling Stone, we turn our eyes once again to Disney. I grew up with a lot of the Disney classic movies. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, uh, Dumbo, Pinocchio, Cinderella, Peter Pan, um, The Rescuers, Sword in the Stone, Sleeping Beauty, Lady and the Tramp, Great Mouse Detective, Aladdin, Rescuers Down Under, all of those great, great movies. And if I ever get married myself and have a family, I would definitely want you know, my children to see and enjoy those movies because I think that they are all good movies. But Disney unequivocally has become woke. I mean, the mouse is now a Maoist. That's basically what it is. And we've talked about that um, a little bit before here and there, like when Disney Pixar actually uh, had the, of course, ooh, the, the, the first out gay lead character in a, in a Pixar short. Ooh, what a historic moment. Like, yeah, go back to actually just telling stories like you used to, but be that as it may. So because Disney has actually become so woke, it is a rather, let me just say this. I, I get a feeling of schadenfreude when actually the wokesters bite Disney back when they say that Disney is still not yet woke enough. But that in and of itself creates a problem. Here it is. Disneyland in Anaheim, California has finally reopened after 400 days, over 400 days of being closed. And they actually revamped their Snow White ride. So it is now the, uh, I think it was Snow White's Adventure or something. Now it's Snow White's Enchanted Wish Ride, okay? Everyone was making a big to-do about it, but the left became incensed because the ride actually keeps Prince Charming kissing Snow White at the very end. And why... Why are they so upset? Because he gives the kiss without her consent. This is what Katie Dowd and Julie Tremaine at the San Francisco Gate, this is what they said, okay? The kiss he gives to her without her consent while she's asleep, which cannot possibly be true love if only one person knows it's happening. Haven't we already agreed that consent in early Disney movies is a major issue? That teaching kids that kissing when it hasn't been established if both parties are willing to engage is not okay. It's hard to understand why the Disneyland of 2021 would choose to add a scene with such old-fashioned ideas of what a man is allowed to do to a woman, they wrote. Why not reimagine an ending in keeping with the spirit of the movie and Snow White's place in the Disney canon, but that avoids this problem? How can they actually reimagine the ending? What? Does Snow White suddenly just wake up? What, the, the evil queen just suddenly just gave her a sleeping draft? It wasn't, what was it called? The, uh, one, 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 one. the sleeping death. The sleeping death of which can only be broken by love's first kiss. What, I mean, what is it? Is it just a plain old sleeping draft at this time and Snow White just kind of wakes up and like, oh, okay. I'm all right now. Yay! You know what? Now, Prince Charming, you know, and, and she goes into the whole feminist rant, you know, about Prince Charming. Basically, what they want is they want Snow White to be Meghan Markle, and they want Prince Charming to be demasculinized as, as Prince Harry. I mean, that's basically what they want. How are they going to do that? You can't reimagine that and stay true to the story of Snow White because it's so reimagining, you immediately butcher the story of Snow White because that's what it is. It is the conquest of true love over evil. That's the gist of the story. The gist of the fairy tale. Yes, it's simple. Yes, it's archetypical. That's because it's a fairy tale. It is telling truths poetically. And that's why it doesn't operate under real world logic. It's because it's a fairy tale that's teaching a deeper poetical truth. And as for this cock and bull that you're teaching kids, that it's perfectly all right just to kiss a girl if she doesn't like it or not. Uh, no, because kids, you know, they're not, you know, 
uh, that they're not living in a fairy tale. And if they are, when when kids do have questions about you know fairy tales and reality, that's where parents remember those things. Parents come in and they explain to them. Well, Prince Charming had to do it because that's how you break the spell. But you know, this girl, she's not under a spell yet, so you can't do it. And because it, you know, at four years old, it's probably not true love. You think it is, but it's probably not. Millions and millions of ways that parents, and I'm not here to tell parents, okay, in this sort of situation, this is what you do because, you know, I'm not a parent. And so I have, in this regard, um, no business telling parents how to explain that to their kids, but also because every kid is different, every uh, family is going, and there's no one right way. In this case, there's no one right way to explain that, to have that conversation with your kid. But there is the bigger point here, gang. The bigger point. Well, the, fir the first point is that everything must be destroyed. We've gone from statues uh, to the American flag uh, to Gone with the Wind. And now we are at the level of Disney movies. Classic Disney movies. Because, my God, there is an unconsensual kiss. It's called the kiss of life, you dumbbells. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. And the point behind that, of course, is that everything has to be remade in a totalitarian society because every single stinking facet of life has to reflect the big lie. It has to reflect the narrative. Reality must be expunged, excommunicated, exorcised from the totalitarian society. And a wall has to be built up you thought that the wall that Mexico was going to build at the Rio Grande was going to be impressive? This wall is even more impressive. A wall has to be built around the entire outer perimeter of society so that the truth cannot enter. And that wall extends to every mind and heart that is that has the unfortunate luck to be born into such a society. That's the first point. But the second point... The second point, gang, is this. If we remember our G.K. Chesterton and our J.R.R. Tolkien and our C.S. Lewis, then we remember that fairy tales are not just silly little stories that we tell the kids you know, to, to, go to, to go to sleep, to entertain them. You know, they're, they're not just nursery rhymes that need to stay in the nursery, as uh, Barry Fitzgerald says in the 1945, I believe, edition of Agatha Christie's book, And Then There Were None. His character, the judge, has that line at early on in the movie, nursery rhyme, the place for nursery rhymes is in the nursery. Fairy tales are more than just nursery time, than just nursery rhymes. Because what Chesterton, Tolkien, and Lewis all understood is that fairy tales are real in the sense that they, again, teach children deep, unchanging, unshakable truths. Uh, Chesterton put it like this one time. He said, we don't tell fairy tales to children to teach them that dragons exist. Children already know dragons exist. We tell them fairy tales so that they learn that dragons can be defeated. Tolkien, in a brilliant essay that he wrote in the 30s, I believe even before the publication of The Hobbit, which was on, um, on fairy stories. That was the title of this it was, it, academic uh, talk, academic presentation that he gave in the early 30s. It was uh, on fairy stories. Tolkien made the very bold argument that fantasy at that time manifested in fairy tales and fairy stories and folklore was not only legitimate, not only a legitimate form of storytelling, not only a legitimate form of entertainment, because um, without those stories, without those imaginative stories, we would be reduced to a prison of materialism. And of course, every prisoner has the right to escape. Fairy tales, fairy stories are the means of escaping our materialistic lifestyle and the materialism that a 
more and more and more secular society and now even an outright hostile society towards anything transcendental, that is how we can escape it. But furthermore, Chesterton made an even bolder claim when he said that, for example, the ogre's castle in the fairy tale was more real than the lamppost out on the street. In a sense, it was more real because the ogre's castle represented something uh, terrible and eternal. And it was evil, disorder, perversion. The ogre is ugly and eats people because he is a manifestation of evil. It is that simple. And Lewis, I mean, again, he Lewis uh, basically rearticulated those, those same points. And that's why um, Lewis wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, a sort of a modern fairy tale to reinvigorate Christian theology. Because Lewis brilliantly said in another academic paper that was published in 1932, I want to say, whose title I have forgotten offhand, he said, reason is the natural organ of truth, but imagination is the organ of understanding. Brand that into your heads, game, because that is a monumental truth. People learn things. People understand things through the imagination. And this is where fairy tales come in. So when we remember that, when we remember that true essence of fairy tales, then the left's attack, this whole, you know, bogus attack on Snow White, you know, Prince Charming giving her a kiss without her consent, it becomes a lot more serious and darker. Because like we said, the whole reason why the kiss works in the parameters of the fairy tale of Snow White is because this is true love. The power of love is greater. Genuine love. Okay, I'm not talking about the, the warm fuzzy in the tummy feeling. This is, you know, the, this is the love of God manifested in us and directed towards another person for their genuine well-being and flourishing. Physical, mental, and spiritual flourishing. Okay, That's what true love is. It, the power of that sort of love. It is stronger than death. It is stronger than the evil spells of of the evil queen. It's stronger than all of that. And it's stronger than all of that because it is good. Where the queen is evil and her works are evil, the prince and Snow White are good and they're pure. And that is why even when Snow White is dead, that power brings her back. That's why that's the only thing that can break the spell. So when people are getting after that, for something that doesn't even, again, make sense in that context, consensual. Yeah, because Snow White was going to say between the choice, yeah, I want, I want to be dead forever. <laughs> it becomes an attack even on that idea. It becomes an attack on the idea of true love and the power of true love. Uh, 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 uh. Nothing, Alex Mussolini said in a totalitarian state, uh, everything for the state, everything in the state, everything, I think, of the state. But there can't be anything outside of the state in true love. That sort of love. So just again, to give this specific example, can break the power of the state. And just to take it more broadly, the reason why all fairy tales have to be reimagined, recreated into the image of the left is because, again, of that wall that has to be built in every heart and mind so that the truth can't get in because the fairy tales are fundamentally real and true because they teach metaphysical and transcendental truths in simple but poetical ways ways that children can understand i mean it is just explicitly understand they get it even if they aren't able to articulate it and put it into words they understand what is being told to them through the story, then if that happens, then the ideology cannot steal them away. And that is what the left is actually worried about. That is why they're attacking Snow White. 
And while I don't like cheering on Disney, I am going to say it this once, probably for the last time of my adult life and existence. Disney, you better damn well hold the line at this. Do not change that ride. Do not change anything about the story of Snow White. Keep the kiss of life in there. Keep Prince Charming breaking the, 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 the queen's evil spell on Snow White. Keep it in there. Otherwise, you are even worse and more disgusting than I now think that you have become. So challenge, Disney. Rise up to the challenge. And gang, with that, I am pulling the curtain on this edition of the Rolling Stone. I know, I know, all good things must come to an end, but we will be back as always, uh, next week, with any luck, we will also have a new edition, another On The Stone video for you this week. We have actually been uh, uh, getting a bit of luck. We've had two for two now, which has, it's been a long time since that has happened. So uh, with a little luck, we can actually maintain that. So have a great weekend, gang. Stay safe and stay free. I will chat at you all again soon. Ciao.